Welcome back to my YouTube channel and if this is your first time watching, my name is Uwem Apan. It is a pleasure having you watch this video. In today's video, I am speaking on the peace that passes all understanding. The peace that God wants to give you is a peace that is a promise that will stabilize your mind in Him. The part two of this video is what and how is this peace of God? Peace in the Bible is richer and deeper than what we call peace. We see peace just be peace of mind, calm, silence, quietness. But to God, it's way deeper and richer. The Hebrew word for peace is shalom and it means completeness, wholeness, soundness, welfare, prosperity, happy. In the Greek, it is the word arin, which means security, harmony, safety. So with this, when we talk about the peace of God, we can say the security of God. I have the peace of God. I have the prosperity of God. I have the welfare of God. I have the wellness of God. I have the contentment of God. I have the happiness of God. You see how beautiful this becomes when you understand what and how this peace of God is. And the peace of God figuratively is what you see in Mark chapter 4. Jesus lying in the boat in the midst of the tempest. While the disciples were panicking and troubled, Jesus was well asleep. Why? Because he had peace. And he said, this my peace is what I give to you. As believers, we need to engage our faith to receive this kind of peace that when troubles and problems loom at us, when things, whether they are tasks to do at work, or expectations, or the dreams that we have, whatever these things are that loom at us and we want to get troubled, we can launch back to the peace of God and say, I have peace with God. I have the welfare of God in the place of lack. I have the prosperity of God in the place where I am threatened with wanting. I have the health of God in the place where I am threatened with the symptoms of sickness, I have shalom. So this peace of God is seen in the case of Daniel when he was thrown into the lion's den and Daniel was not panicking. This is confidence in chaos. This is courage in confusion. Where you have confusing things happening around you and you are still courageous. Where you have things that should sweep you off your feet and you are still up there being brave, still going forward to achieve that dream. Because you know your confidence is not in you, it's in God who is your peace. You know your courage is not based on your own bravery. It's not based on your own strength, but it's based on God who is your strength. So at this point, you're not panicking because of the things that are happening. And this is what God calls the peace that surpasses understanding. Look at Daniel turning to the lion's den and he did not panic. It's natural to panic, but the peace of God is what settles you. The peace of God is what establishes you. The peace of God is what anchors you. The peace of God is not the absence of trouble or problems, but it is the presence of God in the midst of your troubles and problems. Though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. It is the presence of God in the midst of your troubles in the midst of your trials, in the midst of your temptations, that establishes you. That is the peace of God. It is the peace that the world cannot give. And since they cannot give, they cannot take. It is the peace that was not received through the smiles of the world. So the frown of the world cannot take it away from you. The smile of the world can't give it. The frown of the world can't take it away. So the frown of the world could be the loss, the heartbreak, the pain, the hurt, the abuse. The world frowned at you when these bad things happen. But the frown of the world can't take away the peace of God because the smiles of the world, the pleasures of the world did not give you this peace. The last part of this video is the question, what will this peace do for you? And in scripture, it is clearly stated that the peace of God will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This to me, shows that the peace of God is like a compass for you because a compass is what shows you direction. So for the peace of God to keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, it is focusing you to the direction of Christ. And to keep means to protect, which means the peace of God is your protector. The peace of God is your watcher. Just like the post pie at the gates of a well-secured place, who is there tracking and watching against any suspicious movement and action, watching against any invasion by an unknown face, unknown person, or anything threatening. The peace of God is like that to your heart 
and your mind such that when your feelings is going after something that is not good for you, the peace will be troubled. When your emotions are trying to make decisions that are not analyzed for you to see the truth or the true picture of what this whole thing is, you start feeling the boiling in you. The peace is not there. So the peace of God is a protector such that if you are to do something, you should launch back to checkmate the peace of God. Is the peace there? Do I have peace in this thing that I'm going into? Do I have peace in this venture? Do I have peace in this relationship? Do I have peace in this contract? And the peace of God is to protect you from yourself because it will protect you from all invasion that will be hostile to you and also from yourself so that you will be preserved not to make decisions or do things that you regret. Because sometimes your mental perception could be evil and wrong. You could have evil purposes when you are in anger, when you are in rage, and the peace of God is what will stabilize you. The peace of God is to anchor you to focus on Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior, because he himself is your peace. As scripture says that he himself is our peace. And in him, we have peace. But in the world, there will be trouble. There will be tribulation. There will be persecution. These things are not going to stop. But the truth is, it does not mean that the tribulation has to stop for us to experience peace. We can still have peace in the midst of the tribulation, of the problems, of the trouble, of the lack, of the famine. We can still experience the peace of God, the prosperity of God, the security of God, the safety of God, the welfare of God, that can still be paramount for us. And because of that, we can be of good cheer. I hope and believe that this video has been of value to you. If it has, hit the like button, give it a thumbs up, and do not forget to subscribe to this channel. It will go a long way to help this channel grow and help me keep doing this. Of course, I need the motivation to keep doing this. So thank you for subscribing. If you have not yet subscribed, I hope you do that. And do not forget to share this video to other people who may need to see this. 